Hey, I'm James from Soaking Dad Barbecue, and today I am trying a wood only fire in the brand new Masterbuilt Auto Ignite 545 series. Now, why a wood fire? Well, I had a bunch of experience last year trying this in my Masterbuilt Gravity series, and I liken it to an automatic offset. It was remarkable the quality of the food that I was able to produce running a wood only fire. And my only hesitation about that is the damage that you could cause by runaway large fires and or the previous generation design where the firebox just wasn't cut out for maybe the higher BTU that you get from a live wood fire. So now that the Auto Ignite series is out, along with some quality control improvements based on the Masterbuilt announcement that said they've heard customers' feedback and are building things a little bit more durable, I thought I would put this to the stress test right away. Cook number two for me, I did a tenderloin reverse sear in my first unboxing video, and a whole bunch of ideas came in what you want to see next, included were ribs, pulled pork, and brisket, but I thought ribs are something I haven't had for a while and I want to get this stress test out of the way right away and see how we can run a live wood fire inside of our Masterbuilt Auto Ignite 545. So without further ado, let's get our ribs ready and fire up our grill. All right, let's get our St. Louis ribs ready. I'm going to use the remaining little bits of a couple store-bought rubs that I have. So this is, I think, uh, Texas uh, sugar and then Heath Wiles uh, garlic jalapeno rub. I like learning from some store-bought rubs and then incorporating my favorite things in my own rubs, which I post for free on my website at smokingdadbarbecue.com. There's a blog there on how to make your own rubs if you're interested in making some. Otherwise, I'm just going to be using up what I have left before it clumps up in today's video. So now that we pat those dry, I'm just going to do a little bit of trim work, just any loose or flappy bits at the end of our ribs. I'm not going to go too crazy here. Just remove what I know will burn anything sticking out. Looks good. Let's get a couple layers of our rub on. Okay, let those sweat out. Let's go fire up our pit. Okay, so I should have a little bit of coal left from my last cook, but I'm not going to add any more into our mini hopper. I'm just going to use what's left to get a bit of a coal bed so that we could switch to tossing in one or two wood splits and that'll help make sure that these combust nice and clean. So for the time being I'll close that up. I'm going to place these wood splits on top so they get a little bit of heat into them as you can tell outside it's nice and cold where I am. Close this up, open up our draft door and slide in a fire starter. Power on our grill. Hit the automatic fire starter. Set our temperature. Let that come up to temperature. Okay, our grill is up to the 270 degrees Fahrenheit that I set it to. So let's start by adding some wood splits. I'm gonna start with one and see if that gives us a nice clean open fire and is able to maintain 270 degrees. And if that's okay, we'll get our ribs on. If we need a little bit more BTU, like I needed in my much larger Gravity Series 1050 when I've done some live fires, then we'll go ahead at that point and add a second split. Let's get nice and close, add our first split. So these are getting some heat in them, so that should be good. Open up our mini hopper. Drop in our first split. Move a little closer so you can see. We've just got that little bit of a coal bed left with that wood split that we've added. So I'm just going to give that a minute, see how long that takes to ignite. And if I need to add the uh, second split. Okay, that looks good. So we've got nice clean combustion, about 20, 30 seconds of the fan. So I'll put this back on. Maybe add one of our second splits, so that's preheating. Let's get our ribs. Okay, that salt's done its magic. Even in these sub-zero temperatures, you can see the ribs sweating out, acting as a natural binder with the salt content that's in the rub to help it adhere to our St. Louis ribs. Let's get these on, close that up, and get smoking. Take a peek, move our wood splits here. Open that up. Come around so you can see. And we are starting to run out of life absolutely in that first wood split. So let's add a second here. And since that was only about 20 minutes, I was wondering if one might be enough, but I'm going to go for the second one. You can see already the advantage of preheating those splits is we get no period of bad smoke. So let me add my second one, just like so. Add a fresh wood split up on top and a second on top. We can keep cooking knowing that we got about 20 minutes or so. Okay, our ribs have been on for about 20 minutes and I can see in the app, I've started to slow down about 
five degrees Fahrenheit. So that to me from my offset experience is a sign that we need to add another wood split. So let's get nice and close, take a look, see if that suspicion is correct. So looking at the data in the app, the two small split approach seems to be the winner as I'm able to get about 30 minutes of burn time with nice consistent temperatures versus that sort of 15 to 20 minutes with a single split. The other reason that that matters is it helps maintain our coal bed. So just off camera, right before I came back, I added another two splits. And just like before, there's enough of a working coal bed that as soon as we drop in these splits that have been preheated, as these are not kiln dried, these are naturally seasoned. One of the reasons I like those is you get a lot more flavor, but that's for another video. But by preheating them, we shorten the time that we go from bad smoke, white smoke, just billowing out to nice clean combustion and so i wanted to just pause there and talk for a second on splits and smoke if you happen to be doing that a couple best practices so the first one you can see here is in wood size so in something like our auto ignite i don't even think i could fit this 10 12 inch size split this is way too much wood so we don't want to go with too much wood the other thing that we don't want to do is say hey james you're adding wood every 30 minutes or so, why not just fill up that mini hopper? There is plenty of room for more than the two splits that you're going to be adding here every 30, 40 minutes or so. So the first reason to that is a safety and fire. I'll just for a quick demonstration, because it worked for the thumbnail picture, uh, but show you what doubling, going from two splits to four splits does. We go from a nice open burn to an absolute inferno inside of our mini hopper. And that's again, with just four of these small splits. The other issue is once we start to dampen that all down, we go from a nice clean burn to a smoldering fire. So I would adjust my bottom draft door vent and try and choke that out, but this will essentially now turn these into charcoal and that'll be bad smoke the entire time. So if there's anything, whether you're cooking on an offset or you're trying to get an offset type result on something like your Gravity Series or the Auto Ignite 545 like I'm using today, it's that a smaller, cleaner, hotter burning fire tastes much better than a large fire smoldering along. Uh, that's exactly why we want to go for the setup that we have today with two small splits. Even though your temperatures might be all over the place, if you're doing something like this on your offset smoker i would take temperatures going up and down like this with a small clean fire and manage the other things that we'll run into like potentially burning the ends and protect it with foil or things like that in order to get a small clean fire is the clean fire will win out over all those other issues. And as you get more experience running a live fire, you can start to adjust and flatten out those curves, but just sticking with a nice clean burn. So if you can only remember one rule, it's a small open flame at all times, whether it's on your offset or what we're recreating today on our Auto Ignite series will give us the absolute best results. Speaking of foils, we've just come up now to the two hour mark. I'm gonna put these ribs in a foil boat as uh, just like in a Komodo style grow, we have that heat channel running underneath of our ribs. And I wanna be able to collect some of that pork tallow or lard that is rendering out as well as just speed up the process and protect the bottom. I almost said that wrong, pork tech, the bottom of our St. Louis pork ribs. And that'll help shorten our cook time. So we're done somewhere in the three to four hour mark at the 270 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll rejoin you a little bit later on when we get ready for our taste test. All right, it's been about three hours. And if the smell around here is any indication of what's in store, we have cause to be excited. It smells absolutely amazing in the general vicinity. Maybe the cold weather is making the aroma of these pork ribs travel further. They smell and I think they look really good. So we reached a spot. I'm gonna get them off the grill onto a cutting board, let them rest for a couple minutes. Meet you over there for a taste test. These look amazing. So the game plan, I'll just get a couple slices here uh, out of each rack of ribs. I'm gonna take the others inside and try and keep them from losing their heat in our sub-zero temperatures. But let's get a couple samples here. Oh, that looks good. It's a really nice looking smoke ring, great bark. You could see the the bone pull back here, everything looks good. So let me transfer the family ribs inside and we'll keep our samples here for our taste test. Cheers. Mm. I don't know if you can see that or if that's coming through on camera, but we have perfect bite through tenderness. It's juicy. Let's check the smoke, clean bones.
Well, I brought two out just in case I needed a, a second one to tell what was going on, but I don't need it. I'm gonna enjoy that inside where it's a little bit warmer. These are some amazing ribs. Now, a couple things I'll be looking for on a longer cook. So the mini hopper says we can go up to eight hours if we were using briquettes, which I don't use. I use natural lump charcoal and that temperature range should be somewhere in the five to six hour range using natural lump versus briquettes. So if we do something like pulled pork, or a brisket, I'm gonna definitely be seeing how long I can get the 545 Auto Ignite to run on a single hopper. Or if we would stick with wood, and I don't know why we wouldn't with results like these, these taste absolutely amazing. Everything I was hoping that I would carry over from the Masterbuilt 1050 into this Auto Ignite is there in terms of the nice clean smoke. That's one of the advantages. This is not airtight by any means, and we are able to run a nice clean open flame the entire three hours. Now I will say, if I show you the temperature graph here, the autopilot algorithm lost the script somewhere about a halfway mark in terms of being able to maintain nice clean temperatures. Ever since I wanted to take that thumbnail picture and let the flames kind of come up for a really cool shot, we never sort of got back dialed in to holding flat lines like I saw for the first 90 minutes. So I definitely want to see if that's something that just because I'm burning real wood, or if the algorithm, these are those types of things, sometimes there's a PID and they learn and they basically, they update their information in terms of how much fan you need to apply to main temperatures, or if it's just, again, really, really cold and that was causing a struggle. But I wanna see the temperature control on a longer cook and how that starts to impact whatever it is that we're cooking. And I'm glad we had the foil boat here to protect the bottom because I think sitting that much closer to the grid, especially as the temperatures shot up a little bit higher than what we'd wanna see on a low and slow cook. We can get away with it on ribs with nature's protection of bones built in, but on a brisket where we don't have that, that could be something to watch for in the smaller form factor uh, Masterbuilt 545 series versus something much, much larger where I had real estate to work with on the 1050. But all in all, some $500 grill can cook ribs like this, sign me up. Despite my aversion for electronics, this is a fantastic rib. So on that bombshell, I'm James from Smoking Head Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.